Today I'm going to go over an explanation and solution to a really popular leak code interview question. These are asked in software engineering interviews a lot, so you're going to need some practice with these if you want a job in tech. Make sure to like and subscribe and let's jump right in. This was a coding contest problem from our Discord, so if you want to check it out, the link is in the description below. Every month I'm running these contests and there are prizes. So the problem is Array Partition 1. And if we look at this right here, the problem statement looks a little bit confusing. That's one of the challenges of these problems is figuring out what it actually says. So pretty much we need to group the numbers into pairs, add the minimums of those pairs together, and the sum needs to be as large as possible. So we have this array right here, and what we need to do is we need to take groups of numbers. So let's just take one and four, three and two, find the minimums of each. So that will be one and two and add them together, which will be three. Now, if we look at this, that's not going to be the highest value. In the leak code problem example, it says that the output is going to be four. So we basically need to figure out how are we going to get this. Before we jump into the problem, I like to break it down into inputs, outputs, constraints, and edge cases. So if we go in here and look at the inputs, we just have an array of integers with an even length. This means that an integer is a number with no fractional parts. So this could be negative five, zero, and 10, but not something like 2.5 or negative 4.5. The output is going to be an integer, as for the constraints, the problem says that we have an n, which is a positive integer. This is going to set our size of an array, so we know it has to be filled. This is in a range of 1 to 10,000. Then all the integers in the actual array are going to be between negative 10,000 and positive 10,000, including 0. The edge cases here are that we could have zeros, duplicates, and negatives. One thing we can do is take the base example and run through some of these problems. So now with their examples that they gave us, we have 1 and 4, 3 and 2. That's gonna give us one plus two equals three. That's not what we want. So now let's try a different example where we've rearranged the numbers. So we have one and three, four and two, and that's again going to be one plus two equals three. So now we have our last example and notice how this is ordered. One and two, three and four, and you can notice that this is one plus three equals four. So we have a right answer here. So this is interesting. Now we know that some kind of ordering might give us the right answer. So let's try another example. In this example, we've added a few more numbers and we'll notice that one plus three plus five is nine. Now, if we do any kind of rearranging of these numbers, we're going to figure out that we won't be able to get a higher answer than nine. The key to take away here is that we want as many high numbers to be minimums as possible. And the way to do that is to group numbers adjacent to each other in order. Also notice here that when we do backwards ordering, we also get nine. So it either needs to be sorted forwards or backwards in ascending or descending order. For the sake of time, I'm going to encourage you to try the other edge cases such as negative numbers, duplicates, or zeros. Now in these problems, it's great to pseudocode first and then start coding. Okay, so we have an array and we know that we have to sort our array. We also know that we'll need to initialize a sum variable and we need to loop through that initial list, but skip every other number. So that means by a step of two. With each of those groups that we're going to be taking, we need to add the minimum to the sum value and then return the sum value. Okay, so we have our function called array pair sum. This takes in our numbers array. Now we need to sort our array. So in Python, we're just gonna say nums.sort and that will sort everything in ascending order. We also need to create a sum variable. So now we're just gonna say sum equals zero and we need to loop through this list in a step of two. So in Python, we're just going to say for i in range, and we're gonna say zero, and then our ending range, and then our step. So how many steps we're gonna skip. And how we're gonna calculate end is we're just gonna calculate the length of the array. So that's gonna be len nums. So I'll just show you real quick what this is going to do by printing it. So we have for i in range, zero, 10, and two. So what this is saying is let's print a range from zero to 10, not including 10, and go by a step of two. So what is this gonna do? It's gonna print zero, two, four, six, and eight. Back in here, we now have to add the minimum to the sum. So we're gonna say sum plus equals nums i. And lastly, we just need to return the sum. So in an interview, you'd wanna come up with your own test cases. So we have a handful of test cases here and we've just set them equal to the answer that we got in our head when we ran it through the calculation. So now we're just going to run it in the terminal and all of these should print true. Perfect. Now we have time and space complexity. For time, we have n log n time. That's because we're sorting. While we're also looping through the numbers at O of n time, O of n log n time overpowers that. Next, we have space complexity. So this is constant. We're just modifying the numbers in place and storing a singular sum value. As our input grows, our space is going to stay constant. Hopefully that walkthrough is helpful. 
Make sure to join our Discord, like, subscribe, and also follow on TikTok.